This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. Over the last couple of years, I've used Skillshare to tackle my issues with video lighting as well as take better photography. And this year, I plan to improve the overall quality of my videos and tighten up the content. If you're looking to improve your own videos or to get started on your own YouTube journey, then YouTube Success Script Shoot and Edit with MKBHD is literally all you need to go pro instantly, teaching you everything you need to know and more. Skillshare is ad-free, new premium classes every week, and subtitles in multiple languages. So what are you waiting for? Get started on your own content today with Skillshare, and the first 1,000 people to use my link down there in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at something that you guys have requested quite a bit and something I've been meaning to take a look at for quite some time. Now, if you are into plastic model kits at all, you'll know exactly what these are because they've been setting the plastic model community on fire, especially the ASMR snap build scene. These right here are the More Storm Eastern Model Avengers Plastic Model Kits. Now, today I'm going to be taking a look at the Iron Spider or Spider-Man from Avengers Endgame, but I will mention I also do have one of the Iron Man kits, but that one's been put on hiatus for a little while, and I'll mention why very, very soon. But just jumping into answering the big question, if you're like me, what you'll want to know straight away is, are these kits actually any good? Because in a way, they are pricey enough. However, the bang for the buck really is here because these feature some awesome extras, but I guess the bottom line about these kits is, they are very innovative, but not very intuitive. So yes, they are fantastic, but this kit in particular has quite a few major issues. So before we actually jump into the review proper, I'm gonna mention some of the awesome things about this. This kit pretty much includes everything you need to finish it besides the nippers you need to cut it out. This kit requires glue, it gives you the glue. This kit requires a screwdriver, it gives you the screwdriver. This kit has some major awesome features. This kit right here is painted out of the box, so what you see is what you get. This is shiny, detailed, and looks awesome. This kit features LED eyes, which are actually activated with a magnetic stick. Really cool. We've got a completely movable metal stand in here, which also features a spring-loaded clip. And this kit isn't entirely made out of plastic, there is actually some metal frame inside of the legs. Now these are all the innovative aspects, but each one of these comes with a critical major failure. And I guess we'll talk about that when we get to them all. Let's jump right into it. So starting right off with the main event, how is the build of the Iron Spider right here? Well, for the most part, this is very nicely designed, but everything I'm going to say positively about this kit comes with a big butt. The vast majority of this kit right here is undergated, so that does mean even though it is painted on the runners, you're not really going to see much in the lines of nub marks, but there are some here and there that you might notice. That does mean the build time is a little longer than your usual model kit, because you do have to get in there and nip out all of those little pieces or they'll get in the way of the build, but the payoff is definitely worth it when you don't have any nubs all over the place. However, I have found this with other brands' kits, and that is when they are painted or plated or whatever you would call this, that does affect the plastic qualities. But yeah, in the instructions of this kit, it does say it's made out of ABS plastic like the standard Iron Man, but it does not feel like it whatsoever. Even in Bandai's best of the best kits, when it is plated, the plastic tends to be a little bit more brittle. It must be something to do with the plating or coloring process, and the exact same goes in this box. This kit is made out of the most brittle plastic, so I broke three joints while building this, just while building it. So yeah, tight fits plus articulation plus paint plus brittle plastic is not a good combination, so that really is strike one. It looks brilliant, absolutely phenomenal. The plastic is just ready to fall apart. That's a little sad. 
So yeah, that doesn't go for every single joint in this kit. We actually do have some really rough and tough ABS joints in here, especially in the hips, in the core, and at the neck. It's just at some real critical places you do have tight, very weak plastic joints. That is the shoulders and the wrists specifically. Be careful. My recommendation is to actually file these down a little bit till all of the paint is gone and they actually are a little bit loose. That way, there is no chance of breaking them. But I learned the hard way. However, on the flip side, there are some really cool aspects to this build. So we do have magnets and glue in here. You have to glue in the magnets. This is so you can swap out the eyes super simply. We have a metal frame inside of the legs, which is another awesome with a bot. This metal doesn't play very nicely with the plastic. And that means we've got some extra weight in the lower legs. So both of the legs are mine right here. And if you have this kit, let me know, is yours the same? It cannot hold a knee bend. They just fall instantly. So this is the joint you'll have to tighten up. Anyway, that is enough about the build. Let's talk a little bit about the looks. So jumping right on into the aesthetics with that usual full 360 spin so you can see every angle of this kit for yourself. And I will mention, this looks so, so good. The colors on this are fantastic. For example, the red here is that chromed underneath with a transparent red on top, giving it that brilliant candy finish that really catches the light. Next up, we have the gold on here, which has a kind of matte or brushed gold kind of vibe. This is a nice contrast to the very, very shiny red. And if this was a super shiny gold, it probably wouldn't sit against it as nice as what we're seeing here. The navy blue aspects on this, this is plastic, so there is no paint on these. It's just a nice, shiny navy blue plastic. If, and if I'm not mistaken, I think there is some glitter in there to give it a little bit of a metallic sheen. Finishing it all off then, we do have a kind of very subdued, almost kind of browny gray or gray brown, which is on some aspects like the upper legs. We do have some pre-painted aspects inside of this kit, which would be the eyes. However, I will mention that if you do turn on the lights on the eyes, we do get a little bit of light bleed around the outside. So you will need to correct the black on those to make sure that doesn't bleed anymore. We do have multiple options for the head and the eyes, but I'll talk about that in the accessories, which will be coming up next. But yeah, Spider-Man right here looking incredible. So there is one element about this particular model kit that may not appeal to some people. Now, when it comes to Iron Man, the plastic model kit vibe kind of works because Iron Man's suit is segmented and made of a bunch of different parts. But when it comes to the Iron Spider, Spider-Man has more of a streamlined suit kind of look. This particular kit here is jointed up with obvious ball joints at the shoulders and the hips, which does kind of take away from that. On the whole, for me, this isn't a big issue, but to some people, this might stand out a little bit compared to other options like Hot Toys, which costs a whole lot more. For me personally, my only major gripe with this kit is the fact that it is so brittle. I want to get some extreme, typical, over-the-top acrobatic Spider-Man poses out of this, but I'm pretty much terrified to move a lot of the joints, especially up at the upper body, like I mentioned, the shoulders and the wrists. I've already broken a wrist, that's held on with blue tack, and I'm afraid to break a lot more. So when it comes to the looks or the aesthetics of any model kit, the most important thing at the end of the day is what does it look like once it's up on your shelf and in your collection where it should be? Well, the answer to that is this looks so good. So this is a reasonably large model kit, so it's meant to be in and around one ninth scale as far as I know. So if you combine it to Bandai's Gonpla model kits, this would be a lot bigger than a high grade, in and around the same size as a master grade and smaller than something like a perfect grade. I don't have a whole load of figures to compare it to, but there it is beside something similar from SH Fig Arts, which is the Tech on Avenger Iron Man, and something by 3.0, which is their DLX Iron Man. There it is up on a shelf for that shelf presence test, and this is definitely something that is going to stand out, especially because it does come with a stand included so you can get it airborne. So if you've got an action figure display, this is probably going to stand out really well. But if you collect larger scale action figures like Hot Toys, this will be a little bit smaller. If not a good bit smaller, I don't know. I don't have any. So yeah, what can I say when it comes to the shelf presence test? The More Storm Iron Spider passes with flying colors. So now jumping into the accessories, and this is a kit that comes fully loaded. And if you take the price into consideration, when I got this, it cost me around 80 euro. This is incredible. A one-ninth scale Spider-Man with a whole bunch of stuff. We've got an extra head, 
a grand total of 10 hands, a whole bunch of alternate eyes, some web effects, and there's even some things in here that are incredible. We even have included glue, batteries, and a screwdriver. Finally, then we do have a full stand in here as well, which matches up with the Iron Man stand, so you can connect all of these together for a Hall of Armor kind of display. That is pretty cool. Anyway, let's check them all out one by one. So first up in here, we do have that full stand, which is a really nice extra. It's always nice to get something like this included in a box. And the really innovative aspect about this is we've got this flexible metal arm, which is really strong and you can get pretty much anything you want out of. This is similar to types of mic stands or pop filter stands that are out there. So it's a cool use of this kind of technology. However, the clip section is just not as good. The section that tightens it round back just broke while I was recording this, so that it means this plastic is very brittle. It can be tilted up and down like so, and the front section is spring-loaded. However, every time I open this up a little bit, the spring inside, which is quite weak, bends a little bit more. Every time bending, 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 to this point right now where it can barely even hold Spider-Man anymore. And I found this with the version I got with Iron Man as well. The spring inside is just too weak. Again, this stand is 100% innovative, just not intuitive. Moving down to the base segment of the stand, we do have these little clip segments which can attach a whole bunch of these together, Iron Man Hall of Armor style, and we do have some reflective silver paper that you insert into the stand while you're building it, and clear plastic that goes over it with the name of the particular suit, this time being the Iron Spider, which is a pretty cool touch. Next up in here we have 10 different hands. Now this is very, very nice as these are all posed quite well. I will mention though, like I've said earlier on, the wrists on this are incredibly tight, mixed with incredibly brittle. Now every joint on this kit is not brittle, it's just certain ones. Some like the hips and inside of the body and the neck are nice, rock solid ABS plastic. This isn't painted in any way, but the painted joints feel ridiculously weak. Once again, that's the shoulders and the wrists, and I did break one of these wrists. I recommend sanding or filing these down so they're a little bit loose, so they don't get stuck inside when you're trying to turn them and then just end up breaking, because once again, very, very, very delicate. As well as the hands, we do have a bunch of web effects in here, three in total. The first one being a super long one with a bit of a bit at the end, which I can only describe as Spider-Man shooting out one of his webs. The other two are two different web effects, which make it look like the web is stuck to something. This widespread one, as well as a more narrow one that kind of looks like it has a bit of tension behind it, like Spider-Man's pulling on it. In here, we do have two different heads. The one we've had on the whole time is the one with the LED unit inside of it. If you take this little magnetic rod right here and just bring it close to the head, this will turn on the lights, which once again is very innovative. We've got three different modes, on, mid, and off. These aren't necessarily very bright and there is a little bit of light bleed around the side, so you will have to paint this up to hide that. We have two different colored eyes for using with this head, which is the standard ones we have right here, which have a kind of pearlescent look to them, and we have some of the instant kill mode eyes in red. Now these, once again, feel a little bit on the brittle side, so I'm not going to change them in and out. They do feel like a bit of a permanent fixture, so I went with these standard eyes. The LED is not the brightest really, but it still looks cool. But the biggest issue, and there's always an issue here with these eyes, is once the battery runs out, these are not going to be easy to get out. There is no like access point. You're going to have to fully disassemble the head. And like I mentioned, the plastic, especially the metallic plastic on this, is very, very brittle. So this will be a break risk. It would have been nice if they put some kind of easy to remove part near the batteries so you could change them easily. Again, innovative, but not quite intuitive. Magnetic LEDs, awesome. Inability to get to the batteries, not so awesome. We do have a second head in here. Again, this is very smart. This is a standard one without any LEDs, and this has swappable eyes. The eyes are actually attachable via magnets. You put a magnet inside of the head while you're building it, and there's a magnet put into the back of each of the eyes. The super glue for doing this is included. Just don't be like me and forget basic physics. And remember that there's poles to magnets, and if you put wrong pole to wrong pole, it's not going to stick and you're going to have to take it all apart again. So make sure it's right before you glue it. 
Once again, we do have two different eyes that is standard and instant kill mode. Lastly, then in here, we do have those big old spider arms. These are gnarly looking. These are really cool. And they really do show just how nice the gold colored paint in here is. The articulation on these is quite nice. It could be a little bit better, I guess, for some forward reaching over the top stabbing positions. But for what we get in here, this is very, very nice. We've got plenty of rotation bends at each of the joints and these just look gnarly these look really cool to attach these you just pop out a little bit of a flat segment in the iron spider's back and just attach this in like so once again be careful because the plastic is brittle so honestly for the price of this kit this cost me about 80 euro which is what 85 or 90 dollars you get so much in here and even though there is a couple of Issues, I feel like these are just growing pains. I don't know how long more Storm have been around, but it hasn't been that long as far as I know. So this is impressive, but I still feel like these kits are in their early stages. So finally now onto the articulation and the general build quality of this particular kit. And I'm going to keep this brief because it's actually the aspect I'm having the most issues with with this particular model kit. So I really don't feel more Storm really took Spider-Man into consideration with this kit. This particular model kit framework to me feels definitely like it would be more suited towards a more mechanical character like Iron Man than a really over-the-top, flexible, athletic, dynamic character like Spider-Man. You'll get the basic poses out of it, but nothing really feels too dynamic. For example, we're lacking the ability to twist the forearm in order to get the web shooters into that typical Spider-Man web slinging pose. It's always towards the central aspect of the body, which looks a little awkward in some poses. The ankle gives us nothing at all, a little bit to the side, but that is it, which again is very counterintuitive to a character like Spider-Man. It's very, very blocked. And I'll also mention all of the metal joints, which is the knees and the ankles are so loose. It's going to take some crazy tightening up. There is no traction to the metal, you see. There is the issues I mentioned before with the very tight joints like the shoulders and the wrists. Based on a very brittle plastic, there is a high chance of breaking and I've broken, well, multiple joints on this kit. However, when we get to the good points, there are some decent plastic joints in the torso and the neck, which means they won't break. But once again, you're not really getting too much flexible over the top Spider-Man action. The arms around in the back are actually one of the best aspects, and these can pose up an absolute storm. So on the whole, this does feel a little bit on the awkward side for Spider-Man. There's so many loose joints and overly tight brittle joints that once again, this kit feels like it just needed a little bit more time in planning and then it could have been sheer perfection. On the whole though, if you're a modeler with some intermediate techniques that you can tighten up all of your joints and all of that jazz before you actually put this together, loosen up the ones that are too tight, then you should have a good enough time. If you're straight building this kit, it may be a little bit of a nightmare. So what can I say about the More Storm Eastern model Avengers Iron Spider? The best way to put it is, if looks could kill, this has instant kill mode. It is absolutely phenomenal looking. The price point is fantastic too, considering everything that is going on in here. We've got batteries included, glue included, screwdriver included, light up eyes and a whole bunch of accessories and a stand. However, a lot of the innovative aspects of this particular model kit do drop the ball a little bit. The eyes are a little on the dim side, the batteries run out quick. There is no easy way to change the batteries. The stand crapped out in me, a bunch of the joints kind of broke because of the way this has been painted. And the best way to put it is, if this was baking, there was a phenomenal, awesome, delicious looking cake in the oven about to be ready anytime soon, and someone ripped it out a little too early. So much going on in here that could have been brain meltingly awesome, but I think that is just more Storm pushing themselves beyond what they could do. If they keep building on this and keep innovating like this, we're going to see some of the greatest model kits of all time. They just need to tiny it up a little bit. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more model kit reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Van Fon, Orgy59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., 
Joseph Kuklunk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Frisetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry.